Welcome to a geometry math lesson, chords and arcs. If you happen to be working from a Prentice Hall geometry book, we'll be taking a look at section 12.2 of your textbook today. And this is the second part of the lessons on chords and arcs here by me, Mr. Pies. So let's jump into the, today's theorem. Today's theorem is theorem 12.5. I just want to remind you that the theorem number is specific to the Prentice Hall geometry series, copyright 2009. And this particular theorem is found on page 671. Theorem 12.5 is broken down into two parts. So both of those parts are related to this idea that within a circle or incongruent circles, part one states, chords are equidistant from the center are congruent. And part two reads, congruent chords are equidistant from the center. They sound pretty much the same because they are. They're converses of each other, really. They are the first and the second parts are switched. What part one means, well, even before we get into what part one means, let's talk about this idea of equidistant. Equidistant means they are the same distance, and the distance we're going to be referring to is the perpendicular distance. In the diagram below here, we have chord AB, and we have a line segment OX, and OX happens to be perpendicular to it. That's the distance we're going to be referring to, the perpendicular distance from the center to that chord. So in part one, chords equidistance from the center are congruent. So if we know that chord AB and chord CD are the same perpendicular distance from the center, then we know they are congruent or they have the same measure. Now part two refers to congruent chords that are equidistance or are equidistant from the center basically saying that if we know chord AB and chord CD are congruent, then we know they are the same distance from the center or that the measure of OX is equal to the measure of OY. In essence, we can know that, uh, that these two chords are equal to each other and the perpendicular distance from the center to the chords are equal to one another. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that means in terms of an example or a problem-solving situation. In example 2T, we are asked to find the measure of segment or chord AB. So we need to find the distance from A to B. So from here to here, quite simply stated. And it's going to start with this idea here. It's going to start uh, with the fact that the distance from the center to chord AB is the same or equal to the distance from the center of the circle to chord QS. So first we need to find the measure of QS. The measure of QS is equal to the measure of QR plus the measure of RS. And that is by the segment addition postulate. Kind of a informal proof here to solve this problem. Using the substitution property of equality, we will substitute in the measure of segment QR. QR is 7 plus the measure of segment RS, which is 7. And that's by the substitution property of equality. We simplify this, so we find the measure of QS is equal to 14, and uh, if you were to have to write this as a proof, uh, you would write simplify there. Next, uh, we would be able to state that AB is equal to, or the measure of chord AB is equal to the measure of chord QS. And that's because of the fact that chords equidistant from the center of a circle are congruent, which means they have an equal measure. And so finally, using the substitution property again, the substitution property of equality, we know that the measure of AB is equal to 14. Now that's a very long way and very formal way of finding the measure of segment AB. Uh, mentally, you could probably have done this problem within a couple of seconds, 
realizing that uh, chord AB and chord QS are equidistant, which means they are congruent, because chords equidistant from the center of a circle are congruent. So then you find or figure mentally that QS has a measure of 14, therefore A has a measure of 14. This has been Mr. Pi. If this video has helped you understand uh, chords and arcs a little bit better, feel free to leave a comment or rate the video. Until next time, 